I really haven't like identified my calling yet, but whatever it is, God know God gonna work like work through it, and um, I'm gonna be able to be example for Him. Through, I mean, express an example to Him through others. Welcome to this edition of Mid South Viewpoint. Hi, I'm Byron Tyler. Recently, we had Pastor Myron Thomas of the Innovation Church here on the program, and we talked about something that has been a an idea and a dream of both of ours. Uh, and over the past couple of years, we just haven't done it until today <laughs> to bring some students that uh, are are part of this incredible work called the Leadership Empowerment Center. You know, so often our youth get get a bad rap. You know, they say, why aren't the youth doing better? Why are they always in trouble? Why are they doing drugs? Why are they in gangs? Why are they getting pregnant? I mean, in a lot of cases, uh, what are we doing as a community to help make the lives of our youth better? What are we doing to invest in our in our future leaders? Because they are exactly that, our, our future leaders. Absolutely. And so uh, Myron Thomas, and I know he has a, a, a support team that has come around him to create the Leadership Empowerment Center, and it is doing something. It is working in the trenches daily to yes. impact the lives of students. Yes, and uh, I'm so excited that we can do that today. Mark Keo is with us with Chastity from the, the Empowerment Center, and you guys have the awesome responsibility today to bring 12 of your youth yes. into the, yes. into the yes. station. Yes, sir. Yes. And so uh, tell me, Chastity, how long have you been with the Empowerment Center? So I started when it was Youth Visions in the eighth grade. Um, I started coming when it was Outreach Club on Tuesdays. Um, and I remember vividly my mom would let me come. Um, she said, oh, the gangbangers and stuff are going to be up there. You're not going. Um, and one of the <laughs> leaders from Youth Visions at the time, which is now LEC, came to my house and spoke with my mom, and I've been a part ever since. Um, I started on the leadership team. Um, I was in the eighth grade, and ever since, I went graduated from high school, went off to college at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, um, came back, started working at the middle school tutoring program, and then... Um, I went on from there. I got hired on as a full-time staff, and now I just love what I do. I get to give back what was given to me with the leadership team now. Wow. A live, living, breathing Absolutely. example, yes. Marquio, of what we're talking about today. Yes. And and as we talk, she mentioned this program at the middle school, and there are multiple facets of the Empowerment Center yes. we want to talk about uh, briefly. because We don't want to spend too much time with us without taking time to talk about the youth mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are with us. And so, uh, first of all, you're currently serving youth in North Memphis, Frazier Community. Yes. That's right. 38127. Yes. Uh -huh. Georgian Hills Middle School, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King College Preparatory mm -hmm. High School, yes. Tresman High School. Yes. And uh, basically, you, I like what you say about leadership. When you invest in a follower, you, you add. add. Yes, yes, sir. But what now? What happens when and you... And when you invest in a leader, you multiply. Yes. You multiply. Yes when you invest in a leader and that's what we are excited to talk about today uh some of the programs that you offer are through sports the leadership program the middle school learning center yes mm -hmm. uh and, and there's so much here yes. i mean we would probably have to take several programs to, yeah. to, to talk about it mm -hmm. but uh let's uh Marquia, why don't we have an opportunity to to talk to the students that's what yeah. we really came to today yes. absolutely and chance yeah. you hang by help me get these students in and out and yes. if we have any time left over we'll bring you back in okay. and wrap up the show but uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get our first student okay. here with us. And uh, Marquio, how long have you been with the Empowerment Center? Uh, so me and Chastity's story is pretty similar. Uh, we actually uh, went to the same middle school, Georgia Hills Middle School, uh, and I met Pastor Myron in the eighth grade uh, at the same uh, outreach program called Club. Uh, we changed the name to Teen Night. But uh, he saw some leadership potential in this little young kid. Uh, start investing in it, and uh, the rest is history. See, Been I like a part it. ever since. Uh, something you said there saw leadership potential mm -hmm. and took time investing. Yes, sir. And I think don't do you feel like that's what youth need today is someone to take notice of them? Absolutely, absolutely. We are firm believers that if we are able to show them something different, then they are willing to be something different. I think a lot of times coming from our community and our neighborhood, we only see what's in the neighborhood but exposing them to things outside of the neighborhood and showing them that you don't have to uh, be a product of those things uh, and just stay in those things. You can make a difference. It makes all all the difference in the world. Okay, tell me who we have here. All right, we have Nadisha Hip. Uh, she has also been a part of the, the Leadership Empowerment Center for how many years? Um, I don't know. It's been a long time, since sixth grade, I think. Since sixth grade. And, uh, and I am going to college soon. <laughs> are you really? Yes. And what, what are your college plans? 
Um, I plan to be a cosmetologist. So we'll see where that takes me with the help of Leadership Empowerment Center. So if I need a haircut, I know where to go then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me, what does it mean for you to be a participant in the Leadership Empowerment Center? Um, it means to me to be a part of that is to be something better in life. You know, you have the different routes you can take, but without Christ, you mess up. So I feel as though if with my better relationship with Christ, I can be more successful than the regular teenager. And they, is this Empowerment Center helped you in that relationship with Jesus? Yes. Wow. And in what ways? Um, It's helped me by, I would say, like, taking, well, over, overcoming obstacles that I would never have thought that I would. It's stuff that I went through in my life to where I was like, I'll give up. And with the help of them, it's like, no, keep going. You got this guy. I got your back, too. He's got your back. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that story. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and have our next student. I said we have 12 students today, so we're going to have to kind of move quickly. Yeah, move field. quickly, though. That's yeah. okay. But get as close to this table as you can and right up to this microphone because we are okay. doing live on Facebook while we record. So we want everybody to see who we are talking to. And Marquio, introduce our next guest. All right, so this is Miss London Stevens. Uh, she will be an eighth grader at Memphis Business Academy. Miss Miss London? Yes. London. Uh -huh. L London. Yep. Miss London, so this you're just starting. Mm -hmm. And you have seen your friends participate who are older. Yes, and, I have. And why are you in this program? I feel like that I'm in this program because I've seen, like, the past people, how, how their lives used to be at first and how they've transformed. And I will want some of that, too. I want better for myself and not just to be another average teenager in Memphis. Now, I know you're new in the program, but what are you discovering about yourself since you've joined the program so far? I discovered that I can have, that I have, my confidence has boosted based on, like, having interviews and, and things, and I've learned that I'm able to talk to different people and not just, like, the my group of friends. Wow, and you're doing a great job today. <laughs> right. I mean, we might have a future broadcaster here, you know? London, That's what it sounds like. It sounds like it to me, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, London. God bless you. Thanks for stopping Thank by. And now we're going to, we had just a couple of more ladies than we did men, so now we're kind of going to be kind of dispersing some men and ladies together to get everybody in. But if you'll roll right up to this table as close as you can get to Marquio and real close to this microphone and introduce our guest, Marquio. All right, this is Jacques Johnson. Uh, he will be um, a freshman uh, in college this fall. Uh, he's been in the program since fifth or sixth grade? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. And that is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, <coughs> Jacques, is that right? Yes, sir. Jacques, tell me, describe your life before getting into the leadership program. Um, but before joining the leadership program, I had a pretty normal life. The only part I didn't know Christ, um, and through the program, I came to know Christ, which changed my life. For you the discovered better. Christ while in the program. Yes. T can you take us to that moment, that day that you discovered who Jesus Christ was and what He was for you? How He was, how His life was offered for you? Um, I was at church, went to the altar, um, gave my life to Him, and. Been living for him ever since. That is Amen. wonderful. Amen. That is so awesome. Uh, so talk about you're you're getting ready to start college mm -hmm. this fall. Yes, sir. In these past, you've been in the program quite a bit since sixth grade. Uh, talk about some of the values, the things you've learned since you've been in the empowerment center. Um, be yourself. Be different, and just strive to be different. Mm. Yeah, and when you surround yourself around people like Kano and stuff. It empower, I mean, it inspires you to be different. And with Christ, it makes it better. It makes it better when Christ makes it better, too. Yeah. Wow, that is so awesome. Thank you for that testimony. Thank you for that story. And God bless you in your new journey as you head off to college. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll have to get you come back after your first year of college. Right, right, and right. An update and see what that was all about. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And uh, let's remind our friends that we're visiting here with some incredible youth from the Leadership Empowerment Center. Uh, executive director is my, Pastor Myron Thomas of the Innovation Church. We've got Marquio here that's uh, pinch hitting, doing a great job with Chastity to give us uh, an understanding about the program with these students that have, are joining us. And uh, Marquio, you're kind of like co host here today. So <laughs> right. tell me who I'm we have. I'm enjoying it. All yeah. right. So we have Mr. Armand Sykes. Uh, he's a rising senior at Memphis Business Academy, and uh, he just. He, we didn't know Armand until last summer. We ran summer camp, and uh, we instantly saw leadership potential in him. 
And when we see it, we want to invest in it quickly. So he's been a part since last year. Armand, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great. Thanks for coming by. Were there anything that you had to do to qualify to be in the program? Well, I didn't know that I was going to end up being part of the leadership team just because all I wanted to do was have something to do for the summer, which was go to summer camp. And my friend, he told me that you should come, and my mom wanted me to get out the house instead of playing video <laughs> games. So I was like, I might as well go. And it was a, it was a good time, and I wasn't expecting, well, not only did I become part of the leadership uh, leadership team, but I also got baptized Amen. just because of the fact that, like, since, like, my grandma has passed, like, I lost my faith in God. So, like, and that happened in my seventh grade year. So, like, from my seventh grade year all the way to my junior, no, to the summer of my ju- no, 10th grade, of the, wait, the summer of my 10th grade year going to the junior, going to be a junior, like, well, I basically lost all my faith in God, and I didn't trust God, and I was basically like doing bad things, cursing all the all that good stuff, which was not good to do. So, it's going to summer camp to help me to not only get back with Christ, not only have my trust back with God, but I actually got a faith within myself, not just because Amen. somebody else showed me how to become a Christian and all that. I, I became a Christian for myself. Amen. So Armand, that did a lot for me. That is so, what a great story. And I think so many people, you know, they come with tragedy and traumatic uh, events happen in their life, such a, a loss of a loved one, like your grandmother in this case. And and sometimes it causes you to wonder, Marquio, right. about right. does God really love me? Why did he allow this to happen if he cares so much about somebody right. I love? And those are real those are real things we deal with in human. But, you know, it's so good that you allowed Christ you know, to say that, hey, he can change this. He can right. change your understanding of all this. And uh, I, I just thank you so much for being real. You know, that's yeah. that's what it's all about, too, is being real. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that story, Armand. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, you have a great day, too. I will. All right. And uh, Markeel, who do we have next? All right, we got Cameron Cobb. Uh, he's <laughs> a character. <laughs> uh, he will be a, a junior this year at uh, Martin Luther King Preparatory High School. And so is he a comedian? Uh, not a comedian. He's, he's funny to me. I don't know if he's funny to anybody else. <laughs> hey, come on. Is that right? Yes, sir. How are you doing? And welcome to Mid-South Viewpoint. Is this your first time on the radio? Yes, sir. Tell me about your uh, time with the uh, youth leadership uh, program and what has it meant for you? Um, well, I've been a part. I've been a connected with um, Leadership Empowerment Center since my sixth grade year, but I really got into it um, my eighth grade year. And uh, I've been knowing Christ like my whole life. My mom always kept us in church and stuff. So, like, when I met, like, it was like a different environment when I came to um, Leadership Empowerment Center. I was innovation with, with Innovation Church, and um, it was like this different environment, some fresh, some new that I ain't never been a part of. And ever since, just been going going good for God, going great for God, being on fire for God, and um, living my life accordingly. What are your friends and family saying about you since you started the program? They they have seen tremendous changes. Like, my, my mama is seeing changes. My like my uncles, everybody saying changes. People call they've been calling me like a preacher since like my last church, but <laughs> like they see a difference, and um, I really am grateful for. for so, that. do you think there's a possibility you might be called into the ministry to be a preacher? Well, it's great possibility. Like I, <laughs> I really haven't like identified my calling yet, but whatever it is, God know God gonna work like work through it, and um, I'm gonna be able to be example for Him. Through, I mean, express an example to him through others. Yeah, from me, from me to I, others. However, he calls you. That's so great. It you is. know, yeah. what, what? This is what you get to work with. <laughs> I know, right? This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. You're welcome. And let's move some more students in the let's chair do. here as we visit with you from the Leadership Empowerment Center. Like I said, we have 12 total, and we're trying to balance our time out yeah. so that everybody can have pretty close to equal time as we can. Yeah. And, uh, okay, take it away, Mark. All right, here we go. We got Jeremiah Swing. Uh, he is also a rising senior. He's been a part of Leadership Empowerment Center. Uh, oh, my goodness. I knew Jeremiah in the third grade. He moved out to Texas and then came back, and he's been a part of uh, LEC ever since. So. Jeremiah, real close to that microphone there so we can get make sure we can hear your voice. Uh, so tell me about your involvement with the leadership group. Um, well, it was it was actually interesting. I remember my first day coming. I arrived. My sister was telling me her friends told her about it, and it went from there. So I um, I came to the building, and it was a lot of it was just a different environment. And I was just it just inspired me to just keep coming, 
And once I came back from Texas, I got more involved and just constantly kept going and being faithful. And then my high school, it took all the way to my 11th grade year to become a part of the leadership team. And this has been uh, tremendous opportunities and things of that nature. Wow. Jeremiah, what difference do you hope to make in the community now that you have been a part of this program? Just inspire people to become better leaders and Amen. especially give back what was given to me. Wow. I like that. Give back. And that's where we talk about that multiplication. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thanks so much. And we'll continue on with our next uh, youth empowerment <laughs> right. participants. We've got we've got a, a whole uh, studio full today. All right. So we got uh, Candice Hip. Uh, she's hey, a freshman, or she'll be a sophomore at Philander Smith University. Miss Candice, get real close to that microphone there. And the Marquio, he won't bite. I promise. Yeah, I won't bite. <laughs> <laughs> So you're already in college. Yes, sir. And how long have you been in? The, when, when did you first start the leadership program? Uh, I think I first started when I was in like the seventh grade, but I got kicked off because of my attitude. So I really, I it really was joined. terrible. Hey, 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 let's not live in the past. You know? <laughs> no, that's right. So I got I really got on fire for God in the Amen. ninth grade. And I've Amen. been going strong ever since. Amen. Oh, you know, and the fact that you guys have a standard, yeah, you know, absolutely. and that's important. Is that was that important for you? I mean, I guess you had kind of a what you weren't very happy when you got kicked out, were you? It was one of those because I guess I was like one of those man, I don't care type of people back then. So when I when I got kicked off, it really hit me. It was like, oh man, these folks not playing for real. <laughs> so I had to go on here, buckle down, and get my stuff together. What's it like being in college? Man, college is hard, but it's not as hard as they say it is. You just got to buckle down and get your work done. Yeah. And what are your dreams? What are your plans? I plan on finishing my uh, bachelor's, and then I want to go back so I can get my Ph.D. in psychology, and I want to get one in biology as well. Okay. What do you think, hopefully, possibly, you could do with what you've experienced through the empowerment program, mm -hmm. through your life now where Christ has brought you to give back to the community? My plan is to... I want to work with children because there's a lot of kids out there, bad attitudes, just don't really know anything. So I just really want to give back to them, you know, let them know, hey, it's okay. You can you can talk to somebody about it, you know. Wow. <laughs> That's really good stuff. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks for Thank sharing you. your story. And this is actually going to be our last one. Is it okay? Yep. Everybody else has decided they, they're where we are. Okay. Yes, sir. I, that, we're cool with that. We we want to make this available for those who feel comfortable. Absolutely. And we've had some great stories. So uh, you want to get Chastity back? Absolutely. Is she back around? Yeah. You know, we've we got an open door in the office today while we're doing this so we can bring uh, students in. And I'll tell you, Chastity, wow. I mean, these students, make sure you get real close there. These students are incredible. Yes. Uh, and, you know, even the ones that said that they recognized they had an attitude, Yes. Mm -hmm. And they needed to be adjusted. Yes. <laughs> right. But but the leadership program is really not a place to do that. I mean, you guys have a standard yes. and you're moving forward. <clears throat> yes. Right. And but it, does that doesn't mean you leave people hanging though. I mean you're no. you're still investing in yes. the youth. Yes. So even when she was outside the program, you spend time with her? Yes. Right. She was a part of our outreach um, program where we had middle school and high school. You can participate in middle school through um, teen night. And then we have our high school leadership programs that are at the schools during the day. Um, they can come for an hour and we just empower them. We take them through college prep. We have a number of opportunities for those programs as well if they're not ready for the leadership component of LEC. Well, wow. and yes. I tell you, so there were so many of these students even started earlier than you did. You started in eighth grade. Yes. Right. Some in sixth grade. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. really, Markeel, this is where we've got to begin with our youth. Yes. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yes. So typically, the type of homes that many of these kids have come from, tell me about yes. where they've come from, Markeel. Oh, uh, uh, it was very similar to mine. Single parent household. Uh, I come from a family of eight, uh, the third of eight. Uh, dad is not in the home. We come from, uh, you know, uh, poverty home uh, households. Uh, and a lot of crime, gang activity in the community. Uh, so a, a lot of different peer pressures and temptations around the community. And uh, so we're asking or trusting these students to rise above the norm around mm -hmm. the community, or around the neighborhood, around their circles of influence, mm -hmm. uh, to be something different than yes. what they see on a normal yes. basis. Yeah. So it's definitely a challenge. So yes. to have a kid, and we call them our fat kids, mm -hmm. faithful, available, and teachable. Yes. 
So to have a kid to say, all right, if you give me something, if you give me the resources, if you push me the extra mile, then I will strive for success yes. outside of my community. Yes. You know, uh, and then take that and be able to give back to the community. It's a blessing. Well, it is a blessing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the fact that you have to be there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and you guys are there. Yes. You're there in the thick and the thin. Yes. And you understand. I mean, what is so in- impressive, too, is the fact that each of you have come through the program. Yes. yes and your lives have been transformed. Yes. yes. And so, I mean, are you guys looking beyond your positions with the Empowerment Center to do other things? Or do you feel like this is the, where God has you and you want to you want to just connect here? To I tell people something? all the time, no one can pay me any amount of money yes. to get me not to do what yes. I'm doing now. Yes. Love Same it. My life has been transformed. Yes. Uh, it has made me a change agent in my family. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I take that to heart. I cherish it. And I look forward to, to, to giving my all to this. Yes, and just being in a position that we understand the circumstances that, it, that they come from, because we Absolutely. grew up in Fraser yeah. also. Yeah. Um, so we know the backgrounds that they come from, the parent, the single parent households that they come from, just the challenges as a you know a youth in Fraser. We understand that, so we're able yeah. to identify and address those issues yeah. and help them through those things. Well, Chastity, I was mentioning about some of the programs, and you, you talked about the middle school, mm-hmm. uh, which was launched back in 2014. The uh, Middle School Learning Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, give us more specific survey. You're ser- serving nearly 25% of the Georgian Hills Middle School students' yes. population. Uh, I mean, that's incredible. Yes. 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 So this is no ordinary school. No. No, we're there. So we are change ages in that school. Um, we have um, a program is after school, Monday through Thursday, um, from 3 to 7. We provide transportation home. We make sure they have a nutritious meal as well as tutoring. We connect with the teachers during the school day to make sure that they're doing everything they need to do in school. And also connecting with the parents to where we can fill in the gap. You know, mm-hmm. hey, if you can't yeah, get to the school important. to make sure that they're doing all right or clear suspension, we're there. You know, we want to fill those gaps and be that support system for the family as a whole. Okay, as I talked a moment ago, and I'm hearing these stories of students in the program, mm-hmm. do you, are there qualifications that you have to have to get in the program? Yes, so they have to fill out an application. We have an application. They show interest. They get an application. They come for, for an interview. They also have to have recommendations from their teachers. Yeah. Their parents have to make a commitment because they have to be there for the meetings. They have to be a part of everything that we're doing, community service, everything. Okay. So <laughs> yes. Because we, we push them to, to service, all right? Yes. So... You know, uh, the amount of time that they spend there because we we believe this program to work. Yes. You know what I mean? So it takes a, a tremendous amount of commitment to be a part of it. Yes. Uh, and so we definitely need that commitment yes. from their parents as yes. well. Well, I think it's obvious that the program is working yes. as we see yes. <laughs> what's taking place. Are there other, is there a model that you guys have that can be taken to other communities with in, in, in the Empowerment Center? Is it being done yet? Or is it pretty much just in the Fraser area? I'm sure it's it's in other places of the city. Uh, it's just so unique in the mm-hmm. Fraser community uh, because we're 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 like family in the community. Mm-hmm. You understand? And uh, to see what it's doing for the youth in our community uh, is such a blessing. And, and like I said earlier, for us to come back, mm-hmm. you know, not get these things, go to another neighborhood or mm-hmm. somewhere else in the United States mm-hmm. to to you know apply what we've learned we get this stuff and we bring it back to our community exactly and we reproduce what we have become so yes. it's, it's beautiful man and just the lasting relationship we've been in a community 20 plus years yes so you know some of their parents have been at youth visions which is yeah. now lec they've been a part of the program so they know what we do they're familiar with the program so those relationships help and you know just continuing forward well you know you've heard that term to bloom where you're planted mm-hmm. right and, and that's really a, a viable thought mm-hmm. because of what can take place. And you said, the cons- I mean, 20 years, mm-hmm. so they know you're there. Yes. Absolutely. They can trust you. Yes. You yeah. know? And, and in order to build relationships, you got to have trust. Yes. And that's the first part of that, Marquis. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow, this has been great. Okay, so those listening right now in the Frazier community have never heard. I mean, I would be surprised if anybody in <laughs> Frazier has not heard of yes. the Youth Empowerment <laughs> Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe somebody had recently moved in, knew they would like their student to get involved. What should mm-hmm. they do? Just contact, um, go on our website. We have uh, all the contact information for connecting with LEC. Um, uh, our administrative person will connect you with the right people. If it's you, then it's us. Um, or anything you need, that she'll connect you with who you need to be connected with. Okay. And you can find out more about our programs on our website also. Okay, now the, 
this program the students are in right now, the summer now, is mm-hmm. there something that also goes throughout the year? Yes. Uh, so will these same students be in the program, or do you, will you graduate and have a new set of 12? No, so these guys, uh, especially the high school students, so what we like to do is we like to keep them, all right? We like to make it full circle. So when they go off to college, we keep those relationships Mm -hmm. because we want, you know, uh, in hopes that they desire to come back Mm -hmm. to the ministry, kind of like we did. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we definitely keep those relationships going even after high school. Okay, but is there a time where students would rotate out and you would get a new set of 12, I guess I'm yes. asking. Yes, so sir. we have open enrollment every year. Yes. Um, they ha- We have level one leaders all the way up to level four. So once you get you are a senior in high school, you'll be level four. Okay. But level one leaders will come in in October and then we'll start the process all over again. Now, Marquillo, you mentioned about some uh, community projects, community service, because that's what it was all about, giving back to the community. Mm-hmm. Can you give us some examples of community projects uh, absolutely uh, the, the the leadership groups that we have in the schools we go uh, clean up the community uh, we have done uh, we went downtown to give uh, food to the homelessness mm-hmm. uh, to the homeless uh, we have painted buildings we picked up garbage trash uh, we actually do stuff uh, do can drives different things like that uh, even at LEC they serve at teen yes. night mm-hmm. uh, you know different things that we have acro- uh, around the ministry uh, they are heavy uh, heavily involved in it mm-hmm. so. Wow so, I mean, it's just a wonderful opportunity Yes, yeah, absolutely. to change a life and to multiply that over and over again. Yes, yes. Definitely. definitely. Wow, this has been so great. I'm so thankful that uh, Pastor Myron, uh, you know, <laughs> had a dream. I mean, yes. having grown up in the Frazier community himself, yes. uh, or no, I don't think he did grow mm-hmm. up in Frazier, did he? Westwood. Westwood. He yeah. did go to Westwood. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. right. Don't get my story <laughs> wrong now. i got to keep it straight. <laughs> but that that he knows the heart. And I, yes. I told this story to Myron last time he was here. I said, if you cut Myron, he's going to bleed Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, right. and I think that's what I'm hearing from you guys, too. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That y'all are all in. Yes, yes sir. Definitely. And I just thank you guys so much for what you're doing for Christ's kingdom in the Frazier community, for blessing us, sharing the story. And I'm so thankful for these students that shared and even the ones that didn't feel comfortable being on the microphone. Mm-hmm. Thank God for them, yes. too, because, yes. you know, everybody has a place yes. and uh, they're still being equally used in their uh challenges right. to, to be great yes. leaders too yes. so we're very thankful to be able to share the story again the leadership empowerment center doing incredible work in uh, the Fraser community friends i hope that you've enjoyed the program and will uh pray for this ministry would you also consider supporting this ministry and we talk about investing in our future leadership this is one way we can do it this is gospel centered it's based on transforms life as you heard a student uh, was baptized a student came to christ understood their need for jesus through this program their life has changed and they're giving back to the community so many of these students are going to college but coming back uh, as we've heard one young lady wants to come back and uh, help the youth and where they are and so this is this is great yes yes, yes sir yes. we're gonna have to do this again with Definitely. future students yes if we can Well, we're going to have to say goodbye. Time has slipped away, but we thank you so much for joining us, friend, on this edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. Uh, By the way, let's get that web address one more time before we say goodbye. www.lecmemphis.org. lecmemphis.org. Go there. You'll see some great information. Well, we'll say goodbye now. I'm Byron Tyler. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.